Hey, Rye Middle School, 7th grade science students, Mr. Borchard here. Mrs. Tamucci asked if I could give you a short tour of uh, some of the plant diversity that's in my yard. So let's get started. Uh, up here over my shoulder, those beautiful tall trees back there that are just beginning to bloom, those are my maple trees. If I bragged about my maple syrup, well, those are the maple trees that I get it from. And now over my other shoulder, the tree in white flower, that is a pear tree, a Bradford pear, and hopefully it'll give us some more delicious pears this year. Okay, well we also have, right over here in front of the maples, is a little cherry tree, beautiful pink flowers in the spring. Uh, and then if we turn it around, this large thing right here is a crab apple tree. Beautiful dark pink flowers in the springtime. So what I'm going to do is turn this camera around and give you a view from the other end as I head over to my front yard. Okay, now we're in the uh, front yard. Looking over to the side, you see those beautiful tall Norway spruce trees that make a nice border between myself and the neighbor. And then the little smaller trees in the front of it in white flower are called shad bush or serviceberry trees. Nice spring flowers there. Sliding over to the to the left, there is a stand of white birch trees standing up. And if you notice all the logs laying on the ground, unfortunately, those were my English spruce trees. I needed to get cut down because they were infected by a virus. Viruses specifically hit the English spruce tree, so they're down, but the Norway spruce trees were not affected, and they're still beautiful and healthy. Moving around the front yard, the yellow bush in the back, most of you are familiar with the uh, forsythia that are in bloom right now. The tall tree hasn't come out in leaf yet, it is a hickory tree with some hydrangea shrubs below it. Next to that is a white flowered Washington hawthorn tree. Beautiful tree, in fact we planted that 20 years ago when we first moved into the house. Look how big it's gotten. In the foreground we have what's called an andromeda, sometimes called a mountain laurel, which is a beautiful little shrub. Behind that is a hydrangea tree which will soon be coming out in leaf and later on big beautiful puffy white flowers and now in the foreground is a lavender patch gives us some beautiful smelling lilac when it's in bloom. More in a minute. Okay now we're looking next to the front door of my home and these are a couple of boxwoods that are beautifully landscaped by my wife to have a beautiful form. They're usually used for hedges or decorative and we are decorating the front of our house with them. Next to that is a cedar tree, a hinoki spruce they actually call it, and we planted that also when we moved in. And look how tall it's gotten in 20 years. Now we're gonna walk around to the side of our house and you can see along this bed here, a whole bunch of irises. These are gonna be blue irises, and they're gonna be absolutely gorgeous when they're in bloom. Working our way down towards our actual gardens. More irises in the corner. And then this one here is a dwarf Alberta spruce. It's a slow growing spruce tree, and it's gonna be beautiful for many years to come. Now to one of our formal gardens. This, my wife likes to think, is our bulb garden and our perennial garden. You see all kinds of bulbs coming up. Okay. We got the beautiful blues in the front. Our tulips are in bloom right now. Right behind them is a tree peony. It's gonna have gorgeous peonies coming up in a couple of weeks. Moving our way around, an interesting patch of fritillia also known as the snakehead flower. That is gorgeous. Next to it, gonna be climbing up this trellis will be a clematis. 
beautiful pink flowers. And here we go. We still have lots of daffodils left in our garden. A very common bulb. We've seen daffodils all over the place this spring. Lining the front again, more of the blue bulbs, more of the snake heads. And as we work our way around, many small bulbs here, a couple of rose bushes, more irises. And over here in our little side garden, another cherry tree beautiful pink blooms in the spring they're faded now to dark pink and the leaves are just beginning to come out and this is under the cherry tree we planted asparagus in those six holes that you see in front of them is our chives a small rhododendron and there again is our hydrangea tree moving now to the left, you can see we have a big fence up to keep the deer out. Okay. And we've got more gardens over here. We just planted this little fig tree yesterday. And hopefully it's going to grow and give us some nice figs in August and September. And in front, if you can see the little tiny greens, are the pea plants my son planted. We can expect a lot of peas in a couple of weeks. These uh, dead looking things are actually live grapes. They just haven't come out yet. So we're hoping for some grapes this year as well. Working our way down. Okay, this is our vegetable garden. There's some ants doing their thing here. Anyway, this is poison ivy. And as you can see, it grows up the tree. You see that? And the leaves are red when they're still baby leaves. Um, but when they get a little bit older, they still have those three leaves, but then they turn green. So you have to be careful. But when you have a poison ivy vine like this going up the tree, what it actually does is it can kill the tree from the inside out. We actually had a tree on our property. Let's hack into it. Anyway, don't touch poison ivy. I'm actually not allergic to it, so it's not a big deal that I'm here. But don't do this at home. My name is Dandelion. You all know and love, and I'm sure your parents absolutely adore, especially when their yard fills up with them, which is because the dandelions turn into these little puff balls. And each one of these little puffs is a seed. There. So those, when you make your wish, it blows these little seeds all over the place. Now what's cool about these actually is that they stick to clothing and they also float very nicely in the wind. So it's a good way to spread your seed. We are now looking at a holly bush and that is a holly berry. Do not eat holly berries. They will cause vomiting, diarrhea, dehydration, and drowsiness. Talk about alliteration. <laughs> so non-vascular seedless plants do not have a vascular system to transport water and minerals throughout the plant and they do not have seeds. Instead they use spores for reproduction. Examples of non-vascular seedless plants include moss, liverwort, and hornwort. Since these plants do not have a vascular system, they rely on a wet environment and they use their leaf-like structures for diffusion, osmosis, and active transport in order to transport minerals and water into the plant. Next we have vascular seedless plants. So these plants have a vascular system but use spores and not seeds to reproduce. Two examples are ferns and horsetails. Because these plants have vascular systems, it allows them to grow taller and thicker. Vascular seedless plants depend on water for sexual reproduction. And by far, the most popular plants that you are most aware of are angiosperms and gymnosperms. Angiosperms are any plant that has a flower on it. Its seeds are also protected by a fruit. 
Gymnosperms are any plants that have a cone. Now, gymnosperm literally means naked seed. So if you think of the word gym, like gymnasium, that is actually from the same sprout, gym, which means naked, because in ancient Greece, the athletes would compete nude, so they called it a gymnasium. And gymnosperms, seeds, are not surrounded by a fruit, which is why they are called gymnosperms, or naked seeds. Both angiosperms and gymnosperms produce pollen. Just to go over what we have learned so far and help you fill out your foldable, under non-vascular, we have seedless plants that reproduce by spores, and we have three categories, mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. Non-vascular plants do not have tube-like structures and use diffusion to move water and substances throughout the plant. Next, we have vascular plants. So these are plants with vascular systems similar to our circulatory system. We have two types, seedless and seed plants. So the seedless plants, they reproduce by spores. Examples are ferns, club moss, and horsetail. So go back to vascular, seed plants. We have two types, gymnosperm and angiosperm. Gymnosperm is broken up into four categories. Needlephyte and cycad, ginkgo, conifer, and angiosperms are broken up into monocot and dicot. Let's go back to vascular seedless. Have tube-like structures that carry water, nutrients, and other substances throughout the plant. But they also use spores, they do not use seeds. Then we have our gymnosperms. They use seeds for reproduction, pollen, it's sexual reproduction. And this is conifers and cones, pine trees is an example. Then for angiosperm, we use seeds for reproduction, pollen, they have broad leaves and they have fruit and flowers. Most of the plants that we are familiar with are angiosperms because they have flowers. I hope you enjoyed this video.